Hello, good evening and welcome to News 360. It's coming to you live from the News Hub here at Odessa Wakanda. I'm Natalie Ford. And I'm Issa Simone. Thank you for joining us once again. Let's go over the headlines now. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Heaven Black Mosquito Coil and Spray. Premier Health Insurance. Calipo. Nido. Electricity company embarks on mass disconnection to retrieve debt owed by customers in the Ashanti region. Fabri is municipal assembly and traditional authority to address challenges in wood carving industry in the district. Also in the bulletin this evening is the story of 22-year-old Alexander Kwete Kumado, who was ushered into a life of slavery at the age of three. We threw spotlight on Latimpa and Kadanyi in the East Gonja municipality, where a chief's compound is now a shelter for goods three years after its completion. On the international front this evening, Typhoon Mankut lashes China's most populous province. Stay with us here on News 360. We've got the details of these stories and some more news. As always, our bulletin is streaming live all across the world on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Now, very first story this evening. The electricity company is embarking on a mass disconnection exercise to retrieve debt by customers in the Ashanti region. More than 600,000 domestic consumers owe the power distributor in excess of 501 million CDs, while corporate clients are indebted to the tune of 137 million CDs. Here's reports by Benjamin Adu. According to management of the electricity company, indebtedness and part theft are crippling its operations in the Ashanti region and impeding its system expansion drive. In a bid to retrieve outstanding debt, the company has served notice to disconnect and prosecute defaulting individuals and institutions. Over 7,485 customers were involved in illegal connection, which cost the power distributor 21.7 million cities, out of which 16.7 million cities has been recovered. Whoever owes us any money, we will run after them. And when we disconnect you, you are required to pay minimum of 75% to get reconnected. Otherwise, you continue to remain in darkness. We are doing mass disconnection from now till the end of the month. If your amount is so huge, you can't pay all. You come to us, we do some negotiation, and then uh, we'll be able to give you a schedule to pay. But if you don't come and we chase you and we get there, then the 75% must apply. The Ashanti Regional Public Relations Manager of the company, Erasmus Chire Beidu, expressed the company's resolve to extend power to all underserved and developing communities. Because there's no development without a reciprocal uh, revenue payments for electricity that we use. And that is what we want everybody to focus on. Because please pay your bills. Pay your bills. Some have accumulated it. Few, few, few areas. They are coming up with all manner of excuses, and some are even uh, stealing the power. Some are transferring their meters here and there. We have a whole list that we intend to publish. Customers whose bills are in areas for more than 28 days after receipts of their bills will be disconnected. And now, the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly says it will enforce its bylaws to deal with recalcitrant traders in the metropolis. The Metropolitan Chief Executive of CCBNG gave the warning at the inauguration of an 11 member verification and validation committee for the KTR redevelopment project. Recently, several traders were injured in a stampede at a section of the Kwansi Central Market. The committee will assess traders registered to qualify for the distribution of sheds and stores. Phase 1 of the project, which is 95% complete, will be handed over to KMA at the end of October. This will pave way for the start of Phase 2 and 3, which involve the redevelopment of the main market. We thought it prudent that that roadmap, which culminated in the commencement of the project in July 2015, 
we need to re-echo that program and let the world know that what the king said proud to the commencement of program is what he is going from for both. And that's why we say it's a validation committee. We're only validating the actual and rare owners of the shops. Spokesperson of the KJTR Traders Association, Andrew Scoffey, expressed satisfaction at the outcome of the meeting. Traders Association are very much appreciative of what has taken place today. We are looking forward to making sure that whatever they have promised today, it will be done. Litigation with some private developers has delayed the $294 million project, which was started in July 2015. The Kumasi Metropolitan Chief Executive, Osei Sibayentri, blamed the recent stampede at the central market on the resumption of trading at an authorized location. Everybody should be mindful and respect the, the bylaws of the assembly. And if you go overboard, then we will come after you. And it was also an information to them that from Monday going, the tax force will also be coming out. And we want to preempt it and we want to inform them that the task force is not coming for witch hunt, but the task force is coming out after the recalcitrant ones, those who are doing business as where well, they are not supposed to do it. And a clear example was given at Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital runabout, which a lot of passengers are now moving there. Why? Because there has been created an illegal station. The KJTR redevelopment project is also intended to ease congestion in the central business district. And let's now turn to the Volta region as the Hohoi Jasikan Road in the region is currently in its worst state following a downpour last Thursday. The situation has been compounded by the absence of drains. Flood waters cut through the road leaving commuters stranded on either side for several hours. Some daring drivers attempted to cross the Akpafum in Pasim Junction despite warnings. It took the timely intervention by other commuters to save passengers of this cup from being washed away. Residents of Akpafu Toji blamed their predicament on the abandoned road project attributing the current state to an uncompleted culvert at Mimpasam Junction. They appealed to government to get the contractor back on site to complete the project. And now residents along the Medina Adenta Highway continue to risk crossing the expressway following the incompletion of footbridges over the stretch. Here's a report by Eben Ejokumbuati. The six footbridges designed to aid pedestrian safety have been abandoned. Pedestrians risk getting knocked down by speeding vehicles, particularly at night. There are many accidents at night due to the malfunctioning of the traffic lights, and the footbridges have been abandoned for about four years. Daniel Kofi Ahiagbo is of the view the authorities are not being responsible. The rate at which people are knocked down by vehicles on this road is alarming. This year, 332 people have been knocked down. Daniel Latte reminded authorities the provision of footbridges is to promote road safety and not just a pedestrian carriage. It's happening a lot because there no, there's no footbridge here and a whole lot of people are dying when crossing the road. Most especially, we've had some incidents where a brother of mine's father died when trying to cross the road. So we're pleading on behalf of the government to help us with a footbridge. Even if a metal one or something that can help us cross the road peacefully and safely. Inadequate road signs have also made the highway even more dangerous. There are no markings to indicate this pedestrian crossing. Traffic lights on the stretch are either not working, malfunctioning or broken. This has been down in the middle of the intersection for over five months. Investigations have revealed that government owes the China Water and Electrical Construction Limited, the firm contracted to build the road, $45 million and 80 million cities. The debt is on Adenda Road construction and some other projects elsewhere in the country. 
To some other news this evening, he was snatched away at the age of three to stay with a supposed uncle to improve his living condition. Unknown to him, that journey in 1999 would rather usher him into a life of slavery. Peter Kwaadata reports the harrowing experiences faced by 22-year-old former child laborer Alexander Kwete Kumado. Uh. That evening I was sleeping, around four, my husband came to call me that we are going to fishing. And I was surprised because they didn't tell me we were coming to fishing. So I went to sleep again. Then he later came on and came to hit me. So I got up and then I went. Goal 4 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal implores every country to ensure access to quality education for all by 2030. Both young and old must attain basic functional literacy. Ghana has, by her own definition, reduced the educational attainment date to 2025. But this appears to be only a dream. Children of school-going ages are being sold into modern-day slavery to be engaged in fishing, farming and quarrying. Alexander Kwete Kumado was barely three years old when he was sold by his parents, cutting short his dreams to be a scholar. He ended up on the island in the Krachi district of the Volta region. He was too young to know how much he was sold for. I worked with some other children for a set of months. I don't actually, I can't tell about it. And I came to my parents at Oningo. For 10 years, Kwete worked with four different masters as a child fisher. And another master came, my mother also accepted and I went. So that place too, I went to work with this man for a set of months, almost getting to a year. So all the time I don't get a chance to stay with my parents and brothers and sisters to hang out with them. He was engaged for very long and odd hours with little or no food. But luck smiled on him in 2007 when he was asked to go fishing with his peers on a holiday. A team from Partners in Community Development Program, Pakodep, rescued them. They said they were going around to chase for other children. And they were coming with us ashore, so we should wait for them there. But before we finished with our fishing and we went back to shore, they were already there waiting for us. They have already done everything and then they told me that they were taking me away. And I was happy because that was my prayer always, to find a better place. But when I started my journey, I found that I was actually leaving some of my brothers there. How about them? So I was worried. Alexander Kwete Kumado is now a home economics student at Hope College. What I want to do is visual arts. But because I couldn't get a visual arts school, I was doing business as my course. But second term, people gave me an advice that as you get do home economics, because they do GK, which is general knowledge in art. So that's why I'm now doing home economics as my core subject. He was at the justice conference organized by the International Justice Mission and Pakodep at Kitekwache to share his story. The video actually talks about me. I worked with this man for almost like three years. The third one that I went to him was 2007. And by God's grace, Mr. Chibra and his group came to rescue me. If it wasn't to be them, I wouldn't have known where I would be up to now. Even though I am here, there are others who are also there suffering. So with your help and your support, we can also go and rescue them. Experts maintain Ghana can only attain the sustainable development goals if policymakers stop the lip service and adopt a more proactive, result-oriented approach to end child trafficking and slavery. And the Norwegian ambassador Gunnar Holm is urging government to adopt a comprehensive policy to address the compounding sanitation challenges facing the country. He made the observation at the launch of World Cleanup Day 2018 in Accra. Over the last two decades, efforts by authorities at fighting poor sanitation in the country have failed. 
bad attitudinal behavior and the lack of sustained effort at ensuring clean environments have been blamed for filth in the district capitals and other parts of the country. Government set aside a day as National Sanitation Day to help fight indiscriminate dumping of refuse and open defecation. But this initiative has still not improved the sanitation situation. Speaking at a press launch of the World Cleanup Day 2018 in Accra, the Norwegian ambassador to Ghana, Ghana Holm, encouraged government to adopt stringent strategies to end poor sanitary conditions. It is about the mindset, but it's also about policies, it's about politics, it's about sustainable waste management that is taken seriously and gives people an alternative. Because if I pick up this plastic bag and I look around, so where do I, what do I do about it? There is no, okay, maybe there is a trash can. But what happens to that trash can? Will it be emptied? Will it be dumped somewhere? Will it be burned? So it's a long chain of interconnections that we need to address at the same time. The country leader of Let's Do It Ghana, Kate Opoku, argued until the nation intensifies education on bylaws, poor sanitation will continue to be a problem. They need to see waste as a resource, you know. When people change their view and know that this is a resource, it will be different from the way they'll treat it. Don't just throw it away in the streets, but they'll keep it well because they know they can even exchange it for income. Now, Zoom Lion Ghana has handed over 28 sanitation trucks to local assemblies in the Ashanti region to help improve environmental sanitation. The replacement of the old trucks was crucial for the metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies in managing waste. The Kumasi metropolis is bedeviled with waste management challenges. Heaps of garbage remain uncollected, posing serious environmental and health concerns. Zoom Lion Ghana is expected to supply 150 sanitation trucks to metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies in the region. Regional manager of Zoom Lion, Kofi Sechere, noted the company keeps employing best practices in dealing with the sanitation. We need to conscientize the general public that waste should be considered as an economic good. And by economic good, what we mean is that you need to pay something towards that. And once you pay something to that, you get quality of the service. Now, the government in its quest to fight environmental sanitation, we all need to support that agenda. Deputy Ashanti Regional Minister Elizabeth Ajiman said government has initiated measures to efficiently manage the waste in the metropolis. We are left with how the people will think and bring the, their, their refuse and dump them in these buses instead of dumping them anywhere on the ground and even in gutters. These are the causes of blockage in the gutters that do not allow water to flow very well in the gutters. The Swami Municipal Chief Executive, Dr. Joseph Bobier, said the Assembly is intensifying its effort to improve sanitation. It will be very difficult for you to ask people to pay and dump. So we are looking at the mechanism by which we can get people to be responsible at the same time finding means of, you know, overcoming the financial challenges that come with it. So let's remain in the Ashanti region and the Kwabri East Municipal Assembly and traditional authority are planning a forum to address challenges in accessing wood and market for the wood carving industry. And here, the municipal capital is the heartbeat of the industry. Wood carving is considered an important part of the handicraft industry in Ghana. Handicraft exports continue to increase, though Ghanaian carvings struggle to compete with those from Eastern Africa, particularly Kenya. The sector plays a crucial role in the rural economy by providing seasonal employment particularly during the off-farming season. Aria in the Kwabre East Municipality of the Ashanti region is the heartbeat of the wood carving industry. Carving artistic pieces from wood used to be lucrative in this area. The depletion of Ghana's forest, however, threatens access to tree species used for carvings. First thing we get in the nearby towns, the, very, the cost is, is very low, but now from Sefi down here, transport itself, it made the uh, wood itself very, very costly. 
We have nursed some of the seedlings and are ready to be planted. We are pleading for a concession so we can replant the trees. There is a scarcity of wood in our district. Sometimes we buy from forestry and other sometimes too, we go to other religions like Eastern and Bonafo before we get the wood. So we are appealing to the government if we can get a place where we will do our forestation so that people will come and all the time they will get what they want. As a step to address challenges in the industry, the Kwabre East Municipal Assembly and the traditional authority in the area are planning a festival to showcase woodworks. The goal is to profile solutions in accessing wood and market for the artisans. The Watcher News 360 and Mission will be up next with Natalie Fox. Stay with us. Hello, good evening and welcome back to News 360. Time now for our mission segment brought to you by Star Ghana with support from UK Aid, Danida and the European Union. A 22-year-old expectant mother, Hafiz Doris, lost her baby after commuting 19 kilometers to deliver in the Yisezi Health Facility in the Mampurugu and Mwaduri district of the northern region. A chips compound constructed at Nag Nagrungu to solve the basic health needs of the people four years ago has not been operational since completion. Nangruma and four other communities are hard to reach, especially when journeying from the district capital. These communities are referred to as overseas because of their location. Overseas communities are common in the Mamprugu Mwaduri district, but the case of Nangruma is exceptional. Social amenities are not available, and the community is cut off by the Sicily River. In fact, residents, especially expectant mothers, go through a lot to access healthcare. 22-year-old Doris, a pregnant woman, is one of many residents whose survival has been by divinity. Doris was in labor for two days but could not get to any health facility because the only way to a health facility was by crossing the river Sicily. It rained earlier and so the river had increased its volume. An amateur video sent to mission team shows Doris' husband, Hafiz, mobilized friends who transported Doris to a health facility after Doris's condition deteriorated. She was transported to the Yizesi Health Center on a motorbike riding for 19 kilometers. She fainted thrice before arrival. Doris lost her baby in the process. Doris escaped death and she is recovering, but the ordeal she went through is what other residents have endured for years. A chips compound constructed to provide basic health care to the people of Nangruma and beyond was completed in 2015 but has not been put to use. As a result, residents have devised a means to solve their perennial sickness. In a telephone conversation, District Chief Executive for Mamprugu Maduri described the development as unfortunate. He explained why the chips compound at Nangruma has not been functional. The reason why it has not commissioned up to now is that uh, we need to budget for everything. We budgeted for commission of the chips compound in 2017. And if you budget for something, the implementation sometimes will happen in the subsequent year. So 2017, we budgeted that 2018, part of the fund of the common fund will be used to finance Nanguruba chip compounds. And that's what we have been we are doing. The current uh, contract has been awarded to a supplier to supply equipment to us for us to finish the place and make it functioning for the community. By the end of uh, October, the chips compound will be open for operation. Abu Adam further indicated central government will be required to play a critical role in providing a convenient life for the inhabitants. And to get a lasting solution to it is to make sure that we lead to the central government and Ministry of Roads and Highways to come and then construct the bridge. Because even putting up a chips compound there, there are certain cases there. When it comes to um, uh, the nurses may not be able to handle all cases. They have to refer. So even if we provide the equipment, still we have to work 
with the uh, necessary authorities to breach that uh, stream so that uh, even dry a uh, rainy season, when cases are beyond the control of the net over there, they can refer to Walawale or Fembisi. Authorities must act swiftly to save people at Nangroma and its adjoining communities. Well, clearly a very, very worrying situation there. Let's stay in the health sector as expectant mothers at Latingpa and Kadeni in the East Gonja municipality do not attend antenatal clinic. Stanley Niblo reports a CHIPS compound to serve the primary needs of the people is now a shelter for goats, three years after completion. Latingpa and Kadeni are two rural communities located 18 kilometers from Saga, the East Gonja municipal capital. The ancient communities are not developed and poverty is high. Both communities have had their population reduced over the years due to intense hardship there. Healthcare, for instance, is not easily accessed because a chips compound to solve the basic health needs of the people has been abandoned after completion four years ago. The building, which is developing serious defects, also serves as shelter for goats. The East Gonja Municipal Assembly has failed to put the structure to use. Uh, I followed to the assembly as the assemblyman to uh, inquire why the facility is still like that and I've not had any reason for that. So uh, it's affecting us actually. The assemblyman narrates the ordeal residents go through when they fall sick. We have about five communities and uh, amongst these communities when someone is sick, uh, transporting the person to Salaga or Bunjai, it's, it's usually a, a difficult um, issue. So um, we don't know when this facility will be put to use. So the mission team decided to ascertain the truth of the claims by the assemblyman. So he accompanied the team to the Latimpa community. The team chanced upon one pregnant woman in labor. During labor, traditional birth attendants play a key role in the delivery process. In the case of Latengba and Kedeni, there is only one TBA serving both communities, so her service was sought for. In this part of the country, traditional birth attendants are highly respected because of their role in the community. After thorough examination, the traditional birth attendant recommends the expectant mother should be sent to the Salaga government hospital. A means of transport and labor case became a problem. Later, some neighbors intervened. All is set for the pregnant woman to go for safe delivery at a better facility. As usual, traditional birth attendant accompanies the woman on the motorbike. This has been the practice for years.
As a traditional birth attendant, I can't travel anywhere because I am the only one in this community. When they inform me that this woman is pregnant, I have to always visit the woman to check on her and know how she's doing. If the woman is due and they come to call me, I have to go and check. When I check and the woman, will, I cannot take the child, I will have to arrange so that we go to the hospital. There are certain times that we face a lot of difficulty with regards to these women because it may be midnight and moving is always difficult. Some mothers also shared their ordeal in labor with the mission team. When I was pregnant, my legs got swollen and I had to be transported to Salaga Hospital for uh, delivery. Some of us don't have motorbikes, we'll have to go and beg and sometimes you even beg, you don't get. So it's a worry to us. What we are pleading for is for them to come and uh, complete our clinic. When that is done, uh, it will lessen our burden. Health workers from Bunjai come to Lantungpa to weigh our children. Uh, anytime they come, they make sure that they cover the entire community and other surrounding communities. However, if they don't come, that is where the challenge is. For the past three days, uh, my child has been convulsing and uh, had it not been for a motor care rider who came to buy cow to Bunjai, who helped me pick the child to Bunjai uh, Health Center. I don't know what would have happened to her. Kedeni is cut off from Latinpa and so residents cannot regularly access health care. Roads linking the two communities have been badly eroded by flood. In fact, no vehicle can access the community. It's a Herculean task for residents as farm produce cannot be carted to market centers. <laughs> Because of the nature of the road, I am carrying my corn and cassava to Lantungpa to go and grind. Previously, we used to go with the Moto King to go and grind and back, but since the place got cut away from uh, Lantungpa community last year, uh, we have been carrying it on our head to go and grind. So we are appealing to government to come and put the bridges in good shape so that it will lessen our burden. Opinion leaders at Lantungpa confirmed that district authorities have come to ascertain the level of destruction, but no measures have been taken. I'm so in the airport, I'm DC. Last year, when it rained heavily around this area, the whole place was covered with water. So the next community uh, from here is Kidengi. Kidengi is a business center uh, where people go there to buy kettle. And now that the place has been cut away from uh, Lantungpa and Bunjai, people cannot cross and go. So it is affecting them. I've reported the issue to the DC. He came here himself to take pictures of the place. Uh, the MP also came. He took pictures of the place. Place, but still, uh, we are not seeing anything. The only thing they told me is that they are going to inform World Bank and government to come and support us. Since then, the situation has remained the same. The municipal chief executive was not at post when the mission team visited his office. Residents want the chief's compound be put to use to minimize the difficulties inhabitants go through to access health care. And that's how we wrap up our mission segment this evening. You can get some more on our mission segment stories on our website. It's 3news.com. Mission is brought to you by Star Ghana with support from UK Aid, Danida and the European Union. Right, from communities in the northern region that don't have chips compound, let's shift to Intunkumsu in the Ashanti region, that's the Central East District of the Ashanti region, which now has a community-based health planning services chips compound. Most residents hitherto resorted to self-medication and traditional herbal treatment due to the absence of health facilities. Here's a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. 
In Tunkumsu is predominantly a farming community. The absence of a health facility has necessitated most residents to resort to traditional herbal treatment. Residents say lives have been lost in the community because people resorted to self-medication. The sick have to be rushed to the Fijasi Government Hospital, which is more than 10 kilometers away from the community. Some patients who required emergency medical attention died on their way to a distant health facility. To to alleviate their plight, the community initiated the construction of a community-based health planning services CHIPS compound to serve their health needs. But the project halted due to financial constraint. After months of appeal by residents, the Setre East District Assembly has supported the completion of the facility. Assemblyman for the area, Emanuele J. Befi, thanked the District Assembly for the intervention. The made this project come to fruition. So we are very thankful to the district assembly, uh, especially the district chief director. The difficulties that we could uh, imagine, people getting sick, committing them to the district capital wasn't an easy task. But for now, all the burden is now reduced. District Director of Health Services, Dorothy Ifuakwa, said the provision of the CHIPS compound is timely and would enhance efforts at providing door-to-door -door health services to the people. In 2015, we had maternal death. And we had two maternal deaths from here because they commute to Fijasi Hospital for delivery. We thank God we have CHIPS now. And now maternity is also attached. So we can take care of the pregnant women from uh, pregnancy to, de to delivery and then postnatal services given to mothers. Sexual East District Chief Executive Mary Boatma Entry stressed on government's commitment to improve the lives of the citizenry. The community is optimistic the facility would ease the stress of traveling to Ifijuase for health care services. Still on health, the Beidou Health Center in the Tyne district of the Bonua Hafu region continues to deteriorate with tuberculosis posing as a major health risk. The health center recorded 12 cases between January and June this year, compared to six cases in 2017. Here's reports by Larry Parker Simosis. The health centre, which serves about 35,000 residents within the catchment area, has an average monthly OPD attendance of more than 1,200 patients. It is poorly equipped to handle major health cases. The major threat to the health of staff and other patients is the increase in TB cases. Inadequate accommodation to isolate TB patients and visitors increases the risk of contracting the disease. Since this health center is the first point of contact, if the patient is sick, what we do is that the patient comes, sometimes you may not even know it's TB. You have to detain the patient, probe further, do other investigation before you'll be able to diagnose the patient as a TB case. So before you realize, maybe other persons have been infected. Constant shortage of drugs virtually renders holders of NHIS cards in the area helpless. Some of the people express difficulty in renewing their registration. I paid eight CDs for renewal of my NHIS card, but I was told the machine was faulty. I was then directed to Nsoko, but to no avail. The Badu Health Center, established in 2001, is bedeviled with structural defects. In 2014, efforts were made to put up a storeroom for drugs and other essential equipment, but the project remains uncompleted. Apart from the physician assistant Bangalore, it's a two-unit staff quarters at the health center with one of them not in the best shape. A maternity block funded by the MP from his share of the common fund is also yet to be completed. Part of the health facilities land is also being encroached on. You're watching News 360. We've got some sports news coming up shortly with Nana Kojua Fresh. Stay with us.
In international news tonight, Typhoon Manghut has slashed China's most populous province, bringing winds of up to 100 miles per hour. Guangdong is on its highest alert for the storm, which also hit Hong Kong, where it swayed skyscrapers and blew out windows. The death toll from the Philippines has now risen to at least 59. Most died in landslides caused by heavy rain. Manghut considered the strongest storm of 2018 plowed through the northern Philippines on Saturday. More than 2.45 million people have been relocated, and authorities there issued their highest warning level, a red alert. Meanwhile, there are warnings that the worst is still to come from a storm that, that's in the United States and has already been linked to the deaths of at least 14 people. Storm Florence has been dumping what has been called epic rain as it moves through North and South Carolina. The United States National Hurricane Center says the volume of rain will cause catastrophic flash flooding. The slow-moving storm is heading west, but on Sunday is due to turn north towards Ohio. Florence, which started out as a hurricane, now weakened to a depression. The National Hurricane Center said on Sunday, but flush flooding and river floods will continue over a significant portion of the Carolinas. You can get some more international news on our website. It's News360. It's 3news.com. Coming up next is some entertainment news. In entertainment news this evening, the 12th edition of TV3's flagship reality show, Ghana's Most Beautiful, has been launched. Amidst pomp, pageantry and a beautiful display of culture, acting group CEO of media general Beatrice Ajemine Abbey charged the contestants to be confident and give the competition their best shot. Royalty and supporters of the 10 ambassadors graced the launch. The Takrade Jubilee Park came alive as the best of cultures and traditions assembled. Culture meets tradition. Displaying the wonderful culture of the West. This indeed is the life. Adorned in stylish GTP designs, the 10 elegant and intelligent cultural ambassadors were officially introduced to Ghanaians. 10 adorable maidens, 10 beautiful representatives. Congratulating the contestants, reigning GMB queen Zainab urged them to be confident and work hard to realize their ambitions. She warned them against pride and pettiness. This is just the beginning of a journey full of mixed feelings, despair and uncertainties. Through this journey, never underestimate anyone. Pray more, be willing to learn, slow to speak, but quick to listen. Do not entertain pride. The Omanhin of the Eastern Inzima traditional area, Awulai Amihie Kpanyili, encouraged the contestants to be worthy cultural ambassadors. The acting group CEO of Media General, Beatrice Ajimai Abe, is sure this year's show will be in a class of its own, promising viewers value for their time. As a media organization that is dedicated to excellence, we are committing more resources into this year's GMB production. The aim is to give our cherished viewers and clients value for their time and resources. Our efforts will seek to promote the uniqueness of the GMB pageant to promote tourism within and outside the country. She wished contestants the best of luck, noting the show will throw a special spotlight on Ghana's unique tourism destinations. Together with the Ghana Tourism Authority, our official partners for this year's show, we will leverage this competition to market our rich culture and to project Ghana as the preferred destination for tourism on the African continent. For more insight and education on Ghana's rich cultural heritage, delivered in confidence, make a date with Ghana's most beautiful this and every Sunday.
Cause this is the life Match of the TV is a prolific arts writer in that entertainment news tonight, fast rising rapper Don Ichi wants top Ghanaian musicians to walk their talk when they promise to support upcoming talents. The gifted rapper says most A-listed musicians make open proposals to support budding talent, but in reality, they are empty promises. He spoke to Ousu Arai. Drinko, Ghana never see what we the bringo. They done pandies. We must have the beats like some candies. Real bad man, nobody can stand this. In my freestyle thing, me never plan this. Big up shata, man a gear gun see me. Me no sound no yang yang kebe she me. Don Ichi's clout as a rapper is not in doubt. The rapper has paid his dues, earning many admirers. But I'm the next big thing in Ghana rap, and trust me. I'm the future of Ghana rap. The truth of the matter is the topics most rappers shy away from are the topics I deal with. I deal with innovative topics and I try to be as real as possible. When it comes to hardcore flows, I day. I believe I'm still a work in progress. Ichi's creativity and versatility has been praised by many. Obrafo, Reggie Rackstone, Ochiami Kwame and many other industry bigwigs have endorsed him. But beyond the endorsement, the rapper regrets what upcoming talents go through. You see, in our industry, promotion is one of the most difficult things. You understand? Our Ghanaian music industry promotion is very, very difficult. According to the spirited rapper, promises to support them are often unfulfilled. He listed Yapunu, Shatawale and Stone Boy as exceptions. Don Ichi regretted that top Ghanaian rappers have done very little in giving back to rap. We are not united. When you try to get to them for a feature, it becomes an issue. What do they tell you? Oh, I will get back to you. Make you know where you will hear from me. You give up along the line because it discourages me in a way. Okay, yeah, then the action follows. Then people know, so Charlie, this guy said, this guy is good. No, my review. You understand? Some artists are doing some for others, like somebody he does it for the upcoming ones and all that. But it's not enough. They've been underground before, so they know the hustle. The likes of Sakodi, Pede, the big boys up there. Like I'm mentioning Sakodi because he, he always talks about his hustle. He knows how it feels down here. Now, time to put Don Ichi's creativity to test. Uh, Don Ichi, I'm going to put you to test. Oh, yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> we have. Celebrated you some. So yeah, elective master. Yeah. <laughs> <Maybe, laughs> <maybe, laughs> <maybe, maybe, laughs> but we just want to test your creativity. This is TV3. Let's see what you can do with this. Two, three, one, we go. Okay, cool. Open news, Papa. Open the dance. Media general, TV3, and I come for. Natalie Ford. What's up, right? I'm for. Unti Woodia, what the end I'm quanso. When the lie, who do you need by him? Johnny Hughes, with the exclusive news. Concept all right, wow. but also a yeah, guy. Hello. I love his rap. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> on that note, we round up News 360 this evening from the News Hub here at Edissa Wakanda. Visit our website 3news.com for some more news. I'm Natalie Fort. And I'm Issa Morning. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>